So in this video, I'm going to talk about how effective NAC is and I'm going to talk about a couple of old but very important papers on the subject. The first paper is by Swilksteiner et al. in 1988, and the senior author was Barry Rumack, who is famous for the paracetamol treatment nomogram. This was an observational study conducted in the United States. It was a multi-center study looking at all paracetamol overdoses, and they had over 11,000 patients in it, of which just over 2,000 of them would qualify for treatment with NAC based on their paracetamol levels and the treatment nomogram. Now, they were then given NAC. It was pretty much all given orally at the time. That was how things were done in America at the time of the study. And they were then divided into groups according to the time to treatment. Now, Firstly, overall, there was minimal hepatotoxicity if NAC was given within the first eight hours. So that's the important lesson to remember from this video. If you give NAC in eight hours, then people who've overdosed on paracetamol have a very low chance of developing hepatotoxicity. And between the groups where NAC was given in the first four hours and the group where people were given NAC in hours four to eight, there was basically no difference in outcome. So it doesn't seem to matter whether you give it at hour one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up until eight. Everyone seems to do well if they get it in the first eight hours. But after eight hours, the later NAC was given, the worse the outcomes were. And that's something to remember, that if someone comes in and it's been more than eight hours since ingestion of paracetamol, you should not be waiting for levels to come back. You should start NAC immediately. And this also includes patients who present around the seven and a half hour mark if you're not going to get blood back in that time before the crucial eight hours starts. The second paper I want to talk about is by Keyes et al. in 1991. This was a paper in Britain which looked at about 50 patients. And they looked at patients who got NAC uh, more than 33 hours after ingestion, in some cases up to 96 hours after ingestion. And these were patients in an ICU who already had fulminant liver failure. This was a randomized study, and the reason I've included it is because it's one of the only randomized studies that has ever been done to look at the effectiveness of NAC. It's no longer considered ethical to do a randomized study to assess the effectiveness of NAC in paracetamol overdose because it's such an effective treatment at preventing deaths. So they're randomized to receive either NAC or uh, essentially a bag of placebo, so a bag of dextrose. The survival benefit of NAC, even 33 hours after ingestion, was huge. And you can see the graph here shows the percentage of remaining people in the trial, so the, the percentage of people that have survived, and the ones that got acetylcysteine were much, much more likely to survive than the control group. So the bottom line is you must give NAC if someone presents with a paracetamol overdose in the first eight hours that they present, uh, providing that their levels are above the nomogram treatment line. And if you're not going to get the level back before eight hours, then start NAC and you can always stop it later when the levels come back. 